This is one of the most divine natural pools I've ever experienced in my life. Absolutely no mud to be seen and it's crystal clear, invigorates the soul. Come join me as we speak with Norm Van Hoff, the builder and designer of this natural pool. My mission on this earth is to connect people to the magic of nature, to thrive physically and globally. Hi, my name's Hayley Weatherburn and welcome to Thriving With Nature. Hello! Climbing a tree. Hello Thrivers and welcome to this week's episode. Uh, my name's Hayley Weatherburn if you don't know who I am. And I am standing in front of a beautiful, nat beautiful natural pool, which I'm going to show you around in, in just a moment. We luckily get to sit with Norm Van Hoff, who is the designer and builder of this amazing natural pool. And what I love about it is that it looks like a modern pool you can have in your backyard, but it is natural, no chemicals. There's live ecosystems in here, um, but it's not scary. It's not muddy. You can go for a lovely, beautiful swim and it's, it's just divine. So I'm gonna show you a little video around and then we'll sit down with Norm and talk about how he designed this beautiful pool. This amazing pool behind us, what, um, how did you like fall into, now that you're starting to actually design some natural pools for people, how did it come about for you to build this amazing natural pool? Mm, uh, we'd been wanting to have a pool for the, for the Eco Lodge for a long time. Mm. We've got this awesome clean natural creek down the bottom of the land, but as you know by now, <laughs> it's quite a walk. It is, it is. Since the pool's been in, I haven't been down. <laughs> So, so yeah quite a long time but we've never liked the idea of a chlorine pool mm. never been fond of chlorine pools um, and saltwater pools are still chlorine by the way for anybody who doesn't know that um, so we always wanted to have a national natural pool but uh, there's not a lot of information out there there's no textbooks um, what you do see out there can be a bit scary and lots of them look like fish ponds that you can swim in which mm. you know we didn't want you can see the restaurants right behind us so it's right in front of the restaurant, right in the middle of the property. We figured that wasn't going to be fun for people. So it took us a while to get around to, uh, I suppose, making a decision that we'd take a gamble. And it's quite a big investment too. Mm. Uh, then having walk, worked with water quite a lot, especially wastewater, I figured the principles were not that crazy complicated. It's not brain surgery. Mm. Um, and it turned out that it works, you know, it, it was as expected that you don't have to have a fish pond mm. that people can swim in. It can look like a normal swimming pool and it works great. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that if I can't quite see the bottom and it's got a bit muddy and even if there's any kind of reeds or things, I freak out a little bit. Like I will go for a swim, but it's just, I'm not relaxed. In a swimming pool, you want to get in and relax. And this pool does that exactly. You don't come out muddy. You can see what's going on in the pool, which is also very exciting. Yeah, it's, you've done an amazing job. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're pretty happy with it. You know, the first three months, I guess, every morning I'd get my coffee, I'd come down here and have a look at the pool, kind of expecting something, perhaps <laughs> expecting something to go wrong, but wondering if something was going to go wrong. Um, but every morning it's crystal clear mm. and lovely. So now I'm six months in, I don't do that anymore. Uh, and you, you know, just come in and have a swim. I just come and have <laughs> frequent swims. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, so, it's so beautiful and refreshing. There's this sense of the first time I jumped in it, it was my body sort of, I think, cause it thought, you know, when you get on an escalator and it's not moving, your body still goes through the reaction of it's not mo like it, you feel like you're jumping on something moving. Well, the same thing when I jumped in this pool, I think my body was waiting for chemicals or some kind of thing, couldn't open my eyes. Here it was just this crystal clear water and just, you know, like you've just dumped in a big, fresh, you know, water that you would drink. Yeah, it's so true. It is really nice. It's really different. It's, there's no question. It's, um, it feels different to swim in the pool. Yeah. It really does. Um, you know, opening your eyes, as you said, doesn't sting. Mm -mm. You know, little fish swimming around, frogs. Frogs are great environmental indicators. 
Mm. If you see a frog in a pool, you can be pretty sure that the uh, water quality is pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, something amazing, um, you know, for those of you who are like just hear frogs and like, oh, I can't swim in a pool with frogs. What's amazing about this pool is, generally speaking, the little tiny fish stay in the wetlands, and we'll, we'll show you a bit about the wetlands. Um, and they don't really come out until nighttime when you may not be swimming. And it's not, you know, people pay a bit of money here for fish spas down in Bali, down in Kuta. You put your feet in, you get these little fish nibbles. If the water is still and you're still, you'll get some of that. You'll get a free free fish manicure. You get a free fish spa, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah, those, those little guys stay out during the daytime. And as you say, if you sit yeah. still, you come and get a fish spa. <laughs> um, but most of them, as you said, they hide in the wetland during the daytime, which is really convenient because I don't think mostly guests want to swim with a whole bunch of fish. No. Um, so it's kind of awesome at night, as you've probably seen already. You know, the lights come on. You can see it's like a giant aquarium yeah. after dark. It's really fun. Um, so, yeah, everything's like nature is cooperating a lot with this. It's just all worked out wonderful. I want everybody to do it now. I can't imagine why you wouldn't have uh, um, a natural pool now. All right, so let's talk about, you know, how did we get this balance? How did you get this balance in the pool? What are the, what are the main sort of principles that you've applied here to make sure it has that balance? I guess you can sum it up. There's aeration, filtration, circulation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, give life the, what it, requi what it requires to, to be happy and thrive. Air, oxygen, mm -hmm. um, circulation, so the water is continually moving like in a normal uh, creek or little river. Uh, filtration to get, you know, particles out. We use gravel, nothing fancy. We don't even have a sand filter on this pool, um, although I may put some on future pools. Give life what it needs, and mm. life, it would seem, will take care of you. So, you know, we rely on plants and microbes in this to keep everything perfect, and it's been perfect since day one um, with very little maintenance. So I think without getting sort of super technical about it, just provide the basics for life, and life will take care of you a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, the waterfalls here provide a lot of aeration and filtration, the wetland over there. If we have a look at the roots under the, the um, pontoons over there, the, the raft, those roots are an amazing filter, mm. um, which you can see it's commonsensical when you look at them. So, yeah, I mean, it's give life what it requires and it seems to look after you. And I 100% agree with you. Why would you swim in chlorine if you yeah. didn't have to? <laughs> Which applies to all these other things too. Why would you spray your house with pesticides or cover your body in various things Chemicals. that are not good for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all the same stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, that's something you've got over there, no sunscreen, because that would kill the ecosystems here in the pool. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, you know, for it to be practical, it's got to be a little bit robust. You mm. know, it's got to be able to survive a bit of disturbance. So we would have to expect over time that some of our guests will two, wear yeah. sunscreen, will wear something else. Or you chemicals know. on their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in general, nature is pretty good at handling small amounts of, of disturbance or toxic stuff. Small amounts. It's, a, it's when mm. you overwhelm it with too much stuff that things go wrong. Yeah. So you Like know. we're doing to the planet right now. Anyway. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, but yeah that's, yep, that's exactly right. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, it wouldn't be practical if if it was so sensitive to things like that that it sort of st stopped functioning. Yeah. Um, so it's not like that. It's been good. It's fine. Um, you just try and encourage the majority of people not to use things like sunscreens, which are bad for life. Yeah, exactly. Shall we show them the waterfall and the wetlands and maybe you can explain what those systems are doing? Sure. So we have two systems that manage the clarity of the water in the pool. One is the waterfall system here. So water comes from the swimming pool to the first pond up the top there. It comes up, it flows up through a gravel bed uh, and then out through the first of the waterfalls. It's kind of hard to see because the plants are taking over and we've got it switched it's off at great. the moment. Um, in a moment we can turn it back on but so the water flows up through the gravels in that first pond through the root filter up there out into the first waterfall what happens with these waterfalls it's not immediately obvious is that most of the water goes down behind these walls that look you can see a piece of bamboo there so most of the water goes down behind that wall there and has to come up through the gravels to get out of that pond some of it overflows on the top, but most of it goes down the, behind that wall, up through the gravel, 
So down through, so it comes off here, yep. down into here, and, it's, so this, and then it comes up. Up through the gravels, here. exactly, yeah. So that's happening several times here. Over a waterfall, up through the gravel. Over a waterfall, up through the gravel, over the whip. Pardon me. So that it's being filtered every time that happens, and nutrients are being removed every time that happens by the plants. Nutrients being the big number one enemy in any system like this. Because every waterfall also is vigorously aerating the water, which is super important. So there's one, two, three, four, five waterfalls to get back into the swimming pool. Mm. Okay. A German water genius called Victor Schorberger work, worked out, I guess early in the 20th century, that uh, water vessels shouldn't have sharp corners because, you know, water moves in circles. So if you have corners in a fish tank or in a swimming pool or a septic tank or a water tank, that's where all the dirt and nasty bacteria and things tend to accumulate uh, because there's no movement in the water in a sharp corner. So this Schorberger fella figured out that uh, we should always round the corners or cove it. In English, you cove them or build the... Um, build a nice big radius into them so that there are no dead zones and you don't provide any habitat for um, for the bacteria and the, you know, the anaerobic bacteria and the, the stuff that we don't much like in our pools. Yeah, okay, amazing. So let's talk about this, this wetlands you've got here. You can see the, the fish spar fish are going. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a few fish down there maybe, you can see them. <laughs> um, yes, okay, the second treatment system is this one's called a wetland. This is a bit more conventional than the other. These rafts have vetiver grass growing in them. Vetiver is an awesome plant for uh, treating wastewater or for treating, in this case, a swimming pool. It grows extensive big root systems, which I might be able to give you a bit of a look at. Whoa. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's a bit heavy now. So those roots, yeah, that's fine. Those roots growing down there into the water provide a tremendous filter for particles and nutrients, and of course a lot of habitat for the shrimp and the fish and whatnot that live in there. This plant lives well in a low nutrient environment, so it's doing pretty good here. Um, whereas more conventional wetland plants like the papyrus and reeds and rushes we found don't do that well here and we figure it's because the swimming pool is very low nutrient whereas these things are often growing in swampy areas with rather too much nutrient mm. so it's been a bit of a learning process to see which plants will thrive here but certainly vetiver has been one of the best yeah and so what happens here in the so obviously the the reeds of uh not the reeds the vetivers and the roots are mm -hmm. Clean, helping clean the water along with the sure. fish and the shrimp. So what, they've got gravel down the bottom here. Yeah, unlike the waterfall, the water in this case comes from the swimming pool to the wetland and then flows down through those gravels there to the pump, the circulation pump. This one's hooked up also to a skimmer box to take the leaves and whatnot off the surface. Um, so in this case, water comes in here, flows down through the gravels and to a pump and then back to that very vigorous kind of bubbling thing we saw before yeah. in the middle of the pool. Uh, in the case of the waterfalls, the water flows up through the gravels. So same basic thing, you know, water's flowing through the gravel, microbes and roots of plants are stripping out especially nutrients, because nutrients are the thing that grow, that cause the growth of algae, which is our enemy. Mm. Um, so we need to really have as little so as possible. enemy for a swimming pool. Yeah, very, oh yeah, of course, yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Case. For a swimming pool, Concept, you're quite right. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to keep it really clean and crystal clear and low maintenance, we have to keep the nutrients really, really low. All right, how amazing is that? Don't you all want a natural pool now? For those of you who uh, want to find out more or speak to Norm, you can go to barleyecolodge.com. I'll put a link below. Uh, otherwise, start to have a look at have a look at Victor Schoberger and um, take him those those principles that Norm mentioned. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the video next week. For more information, you can visit thrivingwithnature.com. See you next week.